Hi there. We're going to discuss uh, books that deal with uh, essential skills. And the first one, uh, or the first review we're doing, will be of two books which discuss tactical medical procedures from two different aspects. The first book is Tactical Medicine an introduction to law enforcement emergency care and it's by Ian McDevitt and this book is designed for uh, EMS paramedics uh, emergency medicine providers professionals and it orientates them to the world of law enforcement or military operations so it's for people with a high level of skill and how that's going to be applied in the tactical sphere. It's um, some of the procedures mentioned, for example, for example, tracheotomies, needle decompressions, and so on, uh, are, are, are only to be attempted by professionals. So it mentions those uh, and puts them into the context. It, it, it um, describes how uh, tactical medicine is performed within um, uh, an active law enforcement environment and so on. Uh, it goes into things like kit, uh, goes into other aspects um, such as um, uh, environmental problems and so on. Really good chapter on um, K9, the dogs, um, providing uh, uh, care for a wounded um, police dog which is an interesting uh, example and so that book uh, really is for the professionals not not really for the general uh, user the other book uh, whose cover I've put uh, the introduction to this is the uh, street officer's guide to emergency medicine by uh, lieutenant Eric Dickerson uh, with a foreword by my old friend Dave Spaulding and it's a very very comprehensive book uh, it covers a lot of ground and it's more orientated to the ordinary police officer gaining uh, relevant skills in tactical medicine in order to protect himself protect his um, colleagues and to protect members of the public uh, and it's it really starts with the need to improve tactical medicine um, uh, I give some cases where um, tragedies occur uh, basically I'll, I'll sum it up in in the way that in the past the SWAT operation was um, a containment a negotiation phase and then if all else failed final option was an assault um, but then when active shooters happened they had to change the tactic and uh, similarly they have to change the tactic of providing emergency medicine in, in those kind of situations because time is of the essence so uh, it's no use solving the tactical um, a problem and then uh, having people die waiting for uh, the EMS to arrive and so on. The officers on scene, the first responders, must have the training and the equipment to keep people stabilised, to save lives. And that's really, I would say, the thrust of this book. Um, all the chapters have a quiz at the end to um, enhance the learning uh, points and to kind of uh, emphasize what's important takeaways from the chapter which is a really great thing uh, and uh, one of the, the first chapters is the influence of uh, military and civilian EMS and you contrast the development of the uh, civilian EMS uh, pre-hospital care um, which is usually in a pretty stable environment and it 
but mainly uh, concentrated on the ABC, airway breathing circulation, uh, with the military, and he goes right back to Napoleonic times, right through then uh, the lessons from Black Hawk down, Mogadishu, um, to uh, tactical combat casualty care. Uh, which, which is the current uh, state of the art. Uh, he, he describes the uh, trimordial distribution where uh, hemorrhage has become uh, the, the prime thing to take care of. So, uh, means of uh, stopping the bleeding. Uh, and then the talks about the phases, care under fire, tactical uh, casualty care, and Kazivak. Uh, another interesting chapter um, which takes this book out of the realm of just being a, a first aid manual is the mental and physical preparation and the motivation uh, needed. So uh, it, it, it goes into um, really uh, details on, on getting your mind right, imaging and so on, uh, the physical skills necessary, you know, carrying casualties and things like this, rescue, um, and, and the, um, the, the uh, self-motivation required. Uh, fifth chapter is trauma assessment and treatment, uh, which is actions at the scene, infections, uh, he gives a rapid trauma assessment protocol, which, which is good. Um, then there's a lot of information on the skills, for example, tourniquets. Uh, he, he talks about the old, um, you, you worry about the tourniquets, you know, that would, um, uh, you'd lose a limb and so on. And he, he uh, illustrates a case with a, a helicopter pilot who uh, self-applied a tourniquet to his arm and it was on for 16 hours, and uh, he didn't have any loss of function and continued to, to fly. Uh, it covers other important things like pneumothorax, um, treatment for that. Um, I'm not gonna go into everything in the book. Um, the contents cover um, a very, very wide range. There's a lot to get out of the book. As I say, the little quizzes help as well. There's a big section on case studies, which are always interesting. Um, really, the, the book is excellent. Um, I haven't read all of the books out there, uh, but I've read a few of them. Uh, the you know the official uh, government books and the military books and so on. And I think this one uh, I got I got most out of. Uh, it, it it really does give a, a structure and um, a progression to the training required. Um, obviously equipment's a big factor and I would just mention over in the States I was given this catalogue. Steve our good friend over there is an instructor with them as well as being in federal law enforcement and North American Rescue. Um, tremendous amount of uh, equipment all um, purpose designed for the uh, tactical uh, s um, scenario, whether it be law enforcement or military. It's um, really well made. Um, I've got a, a couple of bits of, of their kit, uh, tourniquet. They, they, they do their version of the cat and so on. Really good stuff. I'll put a link to their website.